Hi everyone, and thanks for watching Science at Home. My name is Mike Lewandowski, and I'm a health physicist at 3M Company. As a physicist, I get to work with energy every day. And that's great, because when I was a kid, I loved science. And now that I'm growing up, I get a job where I get to do science every single day. So let's talk a little bit about energy, since physicists spend most of their time studying energy. Have you ever taken a rubber band and stretched it? Well, in that case, you were taking mechanical energy in your muscles, converting it to elastic potential energy in the rubber band. Let's talk a little bit more about this energy. There's another type of potential energy that we talk about, and that's called gravitational potential energy. So if I take this ball and raise it above the tabletop, I have given it some gravitational potential energy. And that energy came from the mechanical energy in my arm using my muscles to lift the ball up. Now, as soon as I let go of the ball, you know what's going to happen. The ball is going to fall down towards the tabletop. That gravitational potential energy will get transformed into kinetic energy. And because this is a rubber ball, the ball will squish when it strikes the tabletop. When it does that, the ball is going to compress a little bit. Some of that kinetic energy will get stored in the ball as elastic potential energy. When the ball at, returns to its normal shape, it's going to use that elastic potential energy to bounce the ball off the tabletop. It will give the ball some kinetic energy and the ball will fly up back up into the air. So now let's watch as we transform mechanical energy into kinetic elastic potential back to kinetic energy. Are you ready? There we go. Now we can neither create nor destroy energy, but we can transform it from one type to another. And we're going to do that in this experiment as we use elastic potential energy and create it to launch these cotton balls. All right, let's get ready to do our experiment. We'll need to round up some materials. To start with, find yourself a pencil. We'll need two rubber bands. It helps if they're about the same size. Then we'll need two paper towel tubes. You can use the inside core from toilet paper, or you could get a paper towel tube and cut it in half. Now, if you're gonna cut that paper towel tube in half, that can be a little difficult. So you might wanna get an adult or a larger person to help you with that. We'll need scissors. We'll need some sort of tape. You can use uh, Scotch Magic Tape, or if you've got a, a sturdier tape, like packaging tape, that will work very well. We'll want some sort of ruler. You can use a yardstick or tape measure, or if you don't have that, several sheets of paper will be ideal. Find a couple of cotton balls. Those are gonna be our projectiles. And then if you have one of these hole punch tools, that would be ideal. And lastly, we want to talk a little bit about safety. Because with this experiment, we're going to be shooting things across the room using our elastic potential energy. It's great to have something to protect your eyes. So if you have safety glasses, now's the time to get them. Otherwise, sunglasses or any type of, of glasses. If you wear prescription eyeglasses, that will be fine. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with our tubes. Now we need to take one tube and put it inside the other. And if you've cut a paper towel roll in half, or if you've got the cores from two rolls of toilet paper, you'll find that they're the same size and they aren't gonna fit. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to take one of them and carefully take your scissors and we're gonna cut along the edge so that we cut a straight line. And it'll be easier to cut halfway and then turn it around. Cut the other way, and now we've got our paper towel tube cut in half. We're going to roll it inside so that it will easily fit into the other tube. And then we're going to secure it with some of our tape. Okay, so lay that down, curl that over. Tape that securely in place. Got a little extra tape I can fold in. 
There we go. All right. Now with that, we need to put, put some holes in this so that we can put the pencil through because we're going to use that as a handle. This is where the paper punch comes in handy. We want to go in on one side and, and actually if you, if you look at the seam that you created and if let's, let's go about 90 degrees or a quarter of the way around the circle from that seam, go in about a half an inch, punch a hole, turn the tube around 180 degrees apart or go directly opposite and we're going to punch another hole. At that point, we can take our pencil and we can just sort of press our pencil through really carefully as we're doing that. And it helps to twist the pencil a little bit. And that will take it all the way through the other side. And we'll end up with one tube with the handle. Now, if you don't have this paper punch tool, that's okay. In order to make a hole in the tube so you can put the pencil through, this is where you might want to go find an adult who can use the end of a pair of scissors to poke a hole. Or my favorite is to go find a nail and use a nail to poke a hole through that. This is where it really is helpful to have an adult uh, help with that or, or a larger older uh, brother or sister to make sure that you don't hurt yourself in that process. Once you've got the handle, you can set that aside. And we're going to take our other tube, we're going to go back to our scissors, and we're going to cut a couple of notches in that tube. We're going to start out cutting about a quarter inch notch, and then a half an inch away, we're going to cut another notch so that we create this little, this little flap. We're going to go to the other side, again, 180 degrees away. Directly opposite, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to create that little flap. Those flaps are where we're going to put our rubber bands. So place one rubber band so that it hangs through the flap on one side. And the other rubber band will go through the flap on the other side. So you'll end up with the, with the barrel of your launcher looking like this. At this point, you'll take the handle part. You'll slide those two together. And now we're going to carefully pull one rubber band over the end of the pencil, pull the other, oh, that gets to be a little tricky, pull the other rubber band over the other end of that pencil. And now if you see if the flaps are starting to come apart like that, this is an opportunity to grab some of that scotch tape and wrap that scotch tape around the end so that it holds the flaps in place. So you can end up with that wrap of tape around it like this. All right, so now you've created your launcher. And if you pull back on the pencil, you'll notice that it will pull back on the launcher. Take one of your cotton balls, roll it around, make sure that it's nice and spherical. And we want to set that down on top. So it should set down on top of the inner tube without falling through. If it falls down into the tube, this is a situation where we're going to want to make a quick modification. We'll want to take a little bit of the tape and put that across the top of the tube so that the, the cotton ball sits on the top and doesn't get caught inside. Okay. All right, so then we could put this back together. Tighten this up. And at this point, we're just about all set and ready to go. We're going to set these things aside. We won't need these anymore. So we have our cotton balls and our launcher. At this point, we're going to get ready to lay out our field, our launching field. And this is where you'll need that ruler, tape measure, yardstick, or some sheets of paper will work out. All right, are we ready to launch our, our cotton balls? What we're gonna do is we're gonna place the cotton ball on top of the tube. We're going to pull back on the elastic band. The cotton ball will drop in. We're gonna hold it horizontal or close to horizontal 
and then we're going to let go. At that point, we're going to see how far the cotton ball travels. And this is where we could use our ruler to measure the distance. Or we could make it just a little bit easier by just laying out sheets of paper. In this case, I've got two different colored sheets of paper, so I've alternated them. And I can count, did it land on the first sheet, the second, third, fourth, fifth, or sixth. We started this whole discussion talking about elastic potential energy, gravitational energy, kinetic energy. We talked about all these different types of energy. Well, we're going to take mechanical energy in our muscles. We're going to pull back on this rubber band. We're going to take some of that mechanical energy, put it into elastic potential energy. We're going to let go of the rubber band. That's going to cause this cotton ball to shoot out the end of our launcher, transfer, transferring the elastic potential energy into kinetic energy in the cotton ball. Now, one of the things that we're going to explore with this is we're going to see what happens when we change the distance that we stretch this rubber band. So let's start by pulling the rubber band back about halfway, line this up, and see what happens. All right, so the ball landed about here and rolled about four sheets of paper away. Now we're going to try the same thing, but we're going to pull the rubber band back further. We'll be adding more elastic potential energy. What do you think will happen? Do you think we'll get more kinetic energy imparted to the cotton ball? What do you think will happen to the cotton ball? Do you think it will go farther or the same distance? That's part of our experiment. In fact, those questions we're asking are actually called a hypothesis. And now we've created our experiment and we're going to test it. So I'll stretch the, the rubber band back further. The cotton ball went a lot farther that time. All right, so here's some things that you can do in order to extend this experiment. You can actually mark on our inner tube, you can mark distances, say for instance, one inch away or one centimeter away from the pencil, two centimeters and three centimeters. And then you could create a data table. And in that data table, by varying different positions, one centimeter, two centimeters, three centimeters, or the first line, second line, third line you draw in the tube, and then we will want to record what sheet of paper or what distance the cotton ball traveled. Now an experiment has to be, to be repeatable, which means we're, wanted, we're going to want to do this many different times. So in this case, I created a data table that's going to do four different trials or four different launches for every distance. And that's the way we'll go and actually take what's fun with launching this cotton ball and change that into an actual scientific experiment. So let's go over what we've learned. We talked a little bit about elastic potential energy, whereas we can take our mechanical energy, store it in a stretch rubber band, let that rubber band release, and we can transform that elastic potential energy into kinetic energy and propel a cotton ball across the room. And we learned that the longer we stretched it, or the more elastic potential energy we added to our launcher, the farther the cotton ball went. So thanks so much for watching. I'm Mike Lewandowski. I hope you come back and check out more of the Science at Home video series from 3M. But wait, we're not done yet. There's always an outtake role, right? So, so one of the things that I've learned doing these, these science experiments is that this is fun, right? But anything that's worth doing, as our friend Steve Spangler says, is worth overdoing. So what you really want to do is you want to go out and get yourself some larger tubes. So some mailing tubes, put your pencil through it. And then if one rubber band is good, two have to be better, right? And in this case, we'll put together our launcher, two rubber bands, each size, put in a ball, now, now we're ready to launch. So are you guys ready?